Hey, it's Dor with Tactical Live. Today's video, we're gonna discuss shooting low, you know, and how to fix it. Easy enough, so stay tuned. Before we get into it, today's video uh, is sponsored by Vetter Holsters. You know, Vetter Holsters are made in the USA. Uh, we use them here on the channel and make it content as well as in our classes. So go ahead and check them out in the description below. Uh, they're a big supporter of the channel. So shooting low could be a number of factors, obviously. You know, everybody's starting out, or even when you're rusty and cold, haven't shot for a while, you know, you'll find that shooting low, starting to creep in from time to time. You gotta focus in on your fundamentals and just, you know, it goes away. You know, the more you shoot, the faster it can go away. The more warmed up you are, the less of a problem and more in your rear view mirror, so to speak, it is. But starting out, it can be a serious problem. And if you don't know exactly how to fix it, it can become very frustrating and it also can become very habit forming. So if you or someone you know that you're trying to help out is experiencing this, obviously anticipating the shot is the number one reason. That's the flinch response, more on that later. But there's, you know, there's some other factors that can come into play as well. The first one is grip. You know, how is your grip? The more you get into shooting, the more it, it experienced you become, the more you'll really be able to fine tune, finesse, and figure out what that perfect grip is for you. Starting out, I, was, I would say just, just grip the gun. You don't have to white knuckle it. You don't have to grip it like you're doing a pull up or you know anything crazy, but have a nice medium firm grip. As again, as you get into shooting farther, you'll you'll be taught, you know, your support hand is actually going to provide most of the stability and support for the firearm. Your primary shooting hand is really just positioning the trigger finger, which uh, brings us to the next factor that could obviate can, can lead to shooting low, which is your trigger pull. Most guns have quite a bit of play, slack, wobble, whatever you want to call it. If you're new to shooting, don't worry about how many walls your trigger has. It's not going to make sense to you quite yet, but, um, or maybe it will. I just, you know, tend to think there's larger issues to get to before we get to the uh, the walls. But anyhow, at my last job we just taught, we, we kept things simple and that was slack, break, reset. You take the slack out of the trigger, find that last little bit of breaking point, And at that point, you're basically pushing an elevator button. And then you take your finger off the trigger, you allow it to mechanically reset, and then you repeat the process. You take the slack out, you break the shot, you reset the trigger. One, two, three, one, two, three. It can be done very quickly, but uh, don't be in a hurry to learn this. With those two things, you know, you've established your grip, you're holding the gun consistently, firmly enough, and you understand that you need to take the slack out of the trigger. You don't just want to pound the trigger from its natural resting position. That's always a problem and achieving accuracy or consistency is just going to be that much more hampered. You know, that being said, we've established a consistent firm grip and we are only pulling the trigger straight back with just our trigger finger. If you find your shot's not only going low, but off to either side, it's usually because you're pulling the trigger with all four of your fingers. You've spent your entire life doing this with your hand. Now you need to isolate and just move your trigger finger. That can be a little tricky, especially when you're gripping something. So you just have to take the time, the practice to rewire your brain for that. But again, we're just worried about the low aspect of missing the target. Um, you can test this method without firing any shots. And that is seeing whether or not the pistol moves when you are pulling the trigger. All right, so we've established a clear and safe Pistola. I mean, I'm on a range, but we'll just go ahead and do this try because you know, it makes it a lot easier for you at home. Go ahead and send it forward, establish that grip. It's not a grip class, you know, we've got plenty of videos on it. All right, so go ahead and establish your grip. Nice and comfortable, make sure it's consistent and even. You know, not a grip video, but go ahead and uh, get that grip established best you can. And then you wanna just make sure you're taking the slack out of the trigger and pulling, the trigger, pulling that trigger straight back and then allowing it to reset before you take the slack back out again and break. That can help, um, so start there. Once we've established that we know how to pull the trigger, we know how to hold the pistol, and we're still having problems, you know, again, that takes us back to the anticipation of the shot. So that again is a natural reflex because you have been countering force and anticipating force and meeting it with your own force your entire life. It's built right into your lizard brain down to your core, and it just takes time to defeat. Some methods that you can use to train yourself out of it. When I was learning how to shoot handguns as a kid, we had revolvers around, you know, I'm old enough to just to assume there'd be revolvers laying around. And um, you know, you can leave some of the cylinder, you know, that's a five shot, six shot, whatever shot gun, you can leave some of that empty. You don't necessarily have to fully load the cylinder. And so you, then you spin the cylinder, you put it in the battery and you go ahead and start taking shots. Well, you're gonna assume that 
they're all loaded. So, you know, you maybe you'll get one or two or maybe none, it depends. You know, it's kind of Russian roulette at this point. And uh, if you flinch on that empty chamber, you know that you have not achieved the ability to overcome that. You're still surrendering to your habit, to that habit, to that lizard brain impulse to counter the, the, the recoil of the handgun. Generally, you only see this in handguns. Another method, if you do not have access to a revolver, because revolvers are old, nobody has them anymore, is you can bring in dummy rounds. And just like the revolver, you can, instead of leaving, you know, chambers empty or whatever on the revolver cylinder, you can go ahead and just factor these into your magazine. So these you can just mix up inside of any magazine. You know, you don't want to know the order. You don't want to know what's coming. When you fire the shot, whether it's a, a live round or a dummy round, it should come as a surprise. And your hand should feel that surprise. So you can go ahead and you just mix these up. We got plenty of uh, how to use dummy round videos, so does everybody else on uh, YouTube. But these are very cheap, and uh, since we're on the subject, if you train, you know, you take firearms and what they could be used for seriously enough to actually train, and I hope you do, having a few dummy rounds in every caliber that you train with is really important. You know, there's a lot of great training you can get with dummy rounds and, and defeating or helping someone else defeat that, that pesky anticipation of the shot is just one of them. So between, you know, the grip, the trigger pull, you know, those are the two biggest fundamentals out of the seven that are, that are gonna cause the problem in my opinion. And then obviously just being able to overcome that anticipation of the shot, that should get you there. So, you know, again, you've, uh, you know how to pull the trigger, you know how to hold the gun, that's good to go. You've identified the whole anticipating the shot reflex, you're working through that, but for some reason your shots are low. Well, you know, more and more and more people are, rever are going to these pistol red dots and they are great for what they are. They do have added value. I don't recommend learning how to shoot a gun on just a red dot. I would learn how to use the irons first, but that's just me. Anyway, if you are learning on a red dot, you may or may not know that there is a slight mechanical offset. So it's important to know what distance your red dot is Z'd, zeroed, point of aim, point of impact, sighted in at. Uh, the industry standard, if there is one, I would say is probably about 15 yards. That's what generally what people go with. And the mechanical, you know, deviation, mechanical offset is going to be pretty nil within that 10, maybe even 15 yards if it's in, if you're sighted in at 15 yards. But you know, if you're trying to be a little bit more precise, a little more nat's ass as it's called at greater distances, you know, the mechanical offset can come into play. So just something to be aware of. Just thought I'd add that in there because a lot of people are new to this stuff. And uh, just like on a rifle, there is a mechanical offset though it's, it's slight. So, you know, give it a try. If you're having that problem, if you know somebody else that's having that issue, go ahead and try some of this stuff out to help them. And uh, let me know how it went in the comments. You know, if you have a different methodology or something else to add in regards to helping somebody out of uh, those low shots, you know, definitely add it. I love learning new stuff. I learn all kinds of stuff, you know, for making these videos in the comments. It's uh, actually the best part of the job. So anyway, thanks for being here. This is Dorm with Tactical Hive, out.